Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch. So, as you can see, I'm not in Gold Scratch again today. Uh, Marianne had dragged me out of the shop and took me on vacation. And uh, so here we are in somewhere in the Caribbean. And even though I'm far away, uh, I can't stop thinking about you guys, my subscribers and viewers, and I got ideas, you know, kind of going around in my head. So I thought I'd kind of make a midweek video. And actually, uh, this was prompted or inspired by a viewer, Kevin Clements, who sent me a great document that I'm gonna share with you as part of this video. Kevin is a, a deep into the science of ignition timing, vacuum advance, ported advance, all that stuff. Yeah, uh, he's uh, spent lots of time in research and development and his own for his own use. And he shared uh, a great document with me uh, that I'm gonna uh, tell you more about at the end of this, uh, end of this video. So, um, and the video is actually a follow-up of the document, I guess I've already mentioned that, about ignition timing. About a week ago, I made uh, the initial uh, document about how I modified, how we modified the ignitions back in the day, and I use that term because I can't think of a better way to describe uh, the 1960s to you. And uh, so, uh, shared that, and uh, of course, uh, without uh, trying, got into more controversy about the issue of uh, vacuum advance, whether it should be ported or manifold. I think most people agree <coughs> that you need to have vacuum advance on the street, and then the argument comes whether it's ported or. And what that means is, by the way, uh, manifold vacuum is below your throttle plates. And so, if you stick your uh, vacuum hose into the little port at the bottom of the carburetor, you'll get what the manifold sees, usually 15, 20 inches of vacuum, whatever you have. And if you use the other port, which is above the throttle plates, uh, you won't see that. You'll see the vacuum above the throttle plates. And so, uh, controversy is which way it works the best. So. I took a position in the last video that uh, manifold vacuum is better on the street and lots of uh, comments on my channel. Speaking of comments, I'm a little behind in responding to them. I try to look at all of them. Anyway, lots of comments from guys who use both ways, a lot of support for the manifold vacuum argument and a lot for uh, uh, the other way of doing it, which is putting on your port vacuum and guys, I'm sure they figured out ways to make it work for them. And I also looked at some more videos since then to give myself uh, a better understanding and background. Once again, inspired by Kevin Clement. So whenever you get involved in something like this and uh, Gold Scratch has no trouble getting involved in controversy. So you want to make sure, you know, that you're right. So you got to think about it. Uh, let me just stand back and think about how you uh, can determine uh, which is right for you. So, uh, if you look at, I've uh, uh, made this analogy before, back in the day again in the 60s, uh, what do we have to learn by? We had Hot Rod Magazine. By the way, I just found out the other day that the uh, first issue of Hot Rod Magazine was in 1948. And that's the year I was born. So I guess I was destined to be a car guy uh, right from the get-go. And the other way was we read manuals and hopefully you got some good advice from, from mentors. So today, uh, thanks to the internet and YouTube, uh, you can watch uh, on YouTube a uh, world-class expert like DV and uh, if you're a student of making horsepower with engines, you know who I'm talking about, that's David Vizard. Anyway, you can watch David give a university level lecture uh, about uh, camshaft design, for example, or flame travel or a bunch of other uh, pretty complex subjects for free just by tuning into YouTube. So we've come a long way in terms of the source of information. So. So even when you get all that, how do you decide which is right and which is wrong? So one of the things you have to do is kind of think for yourself. So let's 
back up. I'm going to try and take a look at this from kind of from 10,000 feet. And let's start off. The internal combustion engine is a device that uh, converts chemical energy, which is your fuel. It's measured in uh, BTUs per pound uh, or sometimes in calories. It's just the metric measurement. Converts that into horsepower. And it's not very good at it, actually, because only about 35% uh, of that chemical energy gets to the flywheel. The rest of it's converted into heat and noise and friction. So once you know that uh, there was only 35%, there's an opportunity, obviously, you know, to improve on that. And that's really what the high performance industry building horsepower is really all about. So what do you need to know? So uh, on the surface, it looks pretty simple. Uh, you get some chemical energy in the fuel, you mix it with some air, uh, you stick it in a chamber and compress it and you fire it off with a spark plug and you're making power. And that's all you need to know if you're working on your lawnmower. But if you're working on a high performance engine and you want to make lots of power, uh, you need to take a deeper dive into that and so that's what this is about uh, there's tons of information we're also going to uh, Mike's going to attach a link to one of David's uh, David Weisart's uh, he just made a video about spark timing uh, called uh, pro spark timing tech I think it's called anyway Mike will put a link to that and I just found that after making the first video and certainly uh, that's good backup information. And there's other videos uh, supporting the opposite case, which is the uh, that you should use port vacuum. So uh, manifold vacuum, just to give you my point of view, uh, why it works in most cases better. Manifold vacuum gives you vacuum at idle. And if you have a uh, almost any engine, but a high performance engine on the street, you need, if you have 34 degrees of total uh, ignition advance, and all these terms were more detailed described in my previous uh, video about this. But when your engine's idling, uh, you, the, the molecules are not very compressed, the flame travel is very slow, so they need lots of time to get going and you need lots of advance. So. If you hook up uh, your, have 34 degrees of initial advance and you hook up your vacuum advance, it could be 15 or 20 degrees and you put your timing light on the uh, magnetic balancer and it's 50 degrees of advance when you're idling, don't get worried about that. It won't hurt anything when you're not making power. Just uh, another kind of analogy, when I break an engine in on, the, on, on my test stand, I use 87 octane fuel. Uh, the engine's not making any power, so it doesn't need high octane when it's not making any power. You can't hold those throttle plates open very long when your engine's not under load. So, so that gives that case. Now, uh, another thing that, uh, another takeaway, uh, let's get into the discussion of the, uh, the DUI uh, Davis uh, Universal Ignitions and there's lots of DUI distributors around. They're a high quality piece. Steve Davis co-authored a document. Uh, I referred to it at the beginning of this video, a Word document. It's a long read and you gotta work hard to follow it. I actually had to read it twice uh, to get it all. And, but it's very, very good uh, document. And he certainly is the you know, world-class expert on that subject. Read that and uh, and watch the David Bizar document. Now, a couple of takeaways that I get from reading uh, those documents. Uh, manifold vacuum is still my position. And if you have a high compression engine, you need less advance. If you have a big camshaft, you need more advance. And if you follow my advice, I made a video uh, last spring sometime matching your camshaft to your compression. If you follow my advice, then you have a big camshaft, which needs uh, more advance, lots of compression, which needs less advance. They kind of cancel each other out and you're back to 
probably about 34 to 36 degrees for most uh, engines, street engines running on pump gas. I'm not talking about nitrous or, or uh, turbo engines or whatever. I don't even know what they do because I don't work on them. But on an actually aspirated engine, 34 to 6 degrees. Plus minus, if you need a lot more or a lot less, then you probably got something else going on. So I urge you to uh, think about it, uh, make your own decision, take advantage of the almost limitless resource of information that's on the internet. You also have Bing and Siri and a whole bunch of other ways that you can ask questions and get answers. Gather all the information you can, think about it, and make your own good decision. So, one of the things that's happened over the years, uh, starting back when I was doing this and before that, uh, a lot of good information got passed on from generation to generation. And that's probably why, how most of us know most of this stuff. And a lot of things got passed on that were myths as well. So. What's a myth? It's kind of a misinformation. People do something that seems to work, so they adopt it as a belief and they pass it on to others. So, and uh, recently I made a video about the fact that you didn't need to back your valve springs off if you, if you uh, store an engine over a long period of time. And it's interesting, I'm a victim of my own uh, issues because my son who used to be re raced together for years, super late models. And he watched the video and he sent me a comment, hey dad, I guess I don't have to back the valve springs off anymore because uh, I used to make him do that every year. So I was uh, part of that too. And having a YouTube channel has kind of forced me to think of things in more in an analytical way. And we can all be victims of just listening to something that somebody tells you and you believe it and you do it. So another great example, uh, back in the day, one of my uh, great mentors uh, lived on the border of the USA. A lot of my good friends were in the States. I was 18 or 19 years old, and I had a mentor who was about twice my age. He built lots of great super stock engines, uh, circle track engines and modified production engines. And his name was Harold, and if you live in that area, you know exactly who I'm talking about. He was also a legend in his time, and still is. And anyway, he was starting up a modified production engine um, back to probably 1968 or 69 or so. And he was a flat tap and cam, and all our engines had flat tap and cams then. And he was in the process of breaking in that cam, and we strongly believe that, as I did, once you started it up, you had to run it for 20 minutes and you could not shut the engine off to break the camshaft in properly. So about halfway through, when the engine got hot, one of the rad hoses burst and sprayed scalding hot water on his arm. And he was in excruciating pain. But he held on to that, that throttle for the whole 20 minutes because he believed that the camshaft had to run 20 minutes in order to get broken in properly. So knowing what we know today, Harold could have shut the engine off, take care of his injuries, and fix the rad hose and start it up tomorrow it would have been just fine. Good example of how myths get passed on and information gets passed on. And as my buddy Frank Vanderpeer said, experience is expensive. Well, uh, that's probably a pretty good example of that. So if you do your thinking up front, do your homework, do your research, as Kevin Clements has done and inspired me to make this video. Uh, you won't be a victim of, uh, of, of myths. And eventually, we've already busted a lot of myths on Gold Scratch. Eventually, we'll get to them all. So, thanks for watching. Forgot to ask you to subscribe. Only 15% of my viewers are subscribers. And that's what we do this for. Uh, subscribers are the engine of YouTube and uh, so I'm going to ask you to do that for me. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me a lot. And from the Caribbean, thanks for watching Gold Scratch.